Thank you. So, friends, good morning, everyone, at the various network centers. Welcome to the third day proceedings, and we are starting with our very first session on one of the types of research which Dr. Bedi might have dealt with on the very first day when dealing with the types of research. He might have dealt with the classification of research on the basis of methods. So can I get in uh, knowledge from the participants? What are the various types of research on the basis of method? Classify research on the basis of purpose, or you can classify research on the basis of methods. So, on the basis of methods, how can you classify research? What are the various types of research? The okay. Okay. So, in nutshell, when we say you can classify research on the basis of methodology, then you have historical research which deals with the past events and how the past events have been uh, uh, happening, what were the reasons, what were the impacts, what were the effects. Yes, I have history to when you are dealing with, say, monuments, so whether that monument was constructed in 1960s, you have to establish the credibility of that event. And then you try to what kind of material. Then you also check whether that material was available on that date or not. So you are dealing with the past event. Or we talk about the education system. I would say in 1950s, what were the instructional processes in place in the technical institution? Now, this kind of a study is historical because it deals with an event which has happened in the past. And you need to establish the credibility of that event by looking into the various parameters which are a part of your study. Then you have descriptive research which deals with current trends, current phenomena, current events. So that is where you want to explain the current. Then you have correlational research which tries to establish the relationship between two or more than two variables. So we have correlation where we'd like to establish as the people say the more intelligent a person, the higher will be the achievements of the individual. So you are trying to establish relationship between intelligence and achievement of the student. Then you have ex post facto research where the cause and effect has already taken place. Now, say for example, you have a private institution, you have government institution. Now, you have students coming out from these two types of institutions. You find that their achievement varies. Government students, they show different achievement and private students, they show different. Now you think that maybe this is the reason, that is the type of management, it also affects the performance of the learner. So you try to establish a probable cause and effect relationship between the type of management and the achievement of the students from various disciplines offered by the technical institution. You don't have the access to manipulate that thing. So it is you are establishing probability or an effect relationship. That is exposed factor research. And the next one is experimental, where the researcher is able to manipulate one independent variable and see its effect on the dependent variable. Now, say for example, we were talking about reinforcement yesterday. And we say you have one concrete block, and then you have another block which is steel reinforced. You have another block which is glass reinforced. So you try to see the performance of these three different because you are giving a reinforcement of a particular strength to the concrete. I'm so sorry. Uh, now, when we are talking about research, so I said. You can classify research so there can be different types. So I was about to discuss about the 
experimental where the researcher tries to manipulate one variable and see its effect on the other. So simple example was when you have a concrete, you have a steel reinforced concrete and a glass reinforced. And you try to compare the strength of these three different types of reinforced concrete. This is where the researcher manipulates. So in this particular session, I am going to take up descriptive research. Next session would be on correlational research. And the third session would be on the experimental research. So before I try to dwell on what descriptive research is, can I have some idea from the participants? What exactly do you understand by this descriptive research? Over to the center. Mm -hmm. Let's listen to one of the centers. Yes. Who would like to? Maybe I go to uh, Gyan Jyoti Institute of Management and Technology. Hello. G. Uh, uh, good morning, madam. Good morning. Uh, I'm from Gandhi Engineering College. I'm uh, another one participant, uh, HOD of Computer Science Department, uh, okay. sharing his views related to descriptive research. Sir, Bolia, please. Go uh, ahead. Good morning, madam. Uh, sir, I think now Gandhi Engineering College is giving your reply. Let's listen to that first. Over to Gandhi Engineering College. Good morning, madam. I am R.K. Manti. Hanji. From GEC Bhubaneswar. Okay. And the descriptive research, descriptive research uh, gives uh, ample scope so okay. that a researcher can uh, contribute significantly. Okay. By just give me, how would you like to explain the meaning of this term descriptive research? Which is about a particular topic which we are selecting and we are trying to explore all the details, every detail possible, so that we can narrate that thing substantially. Chalo, one thing which you say explains something or narrate something, okay? Yes. Fine. Uh, so I'm getting a reply from the uh, I would say I take this opportunity to first welcome the director of PTU you. Mohali here yes, with you. us. Hanji, please go on. Hanji, go ahead. Uh, yeah, ma'am. Actually, the descriptive research is a uh, kind of research where we are going to elaborate the problem in terms of its uh, internal scenario point of view, where the each and every component about the subsistences of the research will be extremely yes, detailed manner. Okay, so you are trying to say that it, it deals with the in minute details of a uh, yeah. maybe a process, yeah. phenomena, or a component. Okay, fine, thank you. Uh, okay, so let's have a close look at the definition first to understand the concept of descriptive research that it is concerned with conditions or relationships that exist first thing that means for example how many technical institutions are in india if i want to have this information i would have to collect information from each state and then how many engineering colleges are there how many diploma institutions are there so i would like to collect information it's a condition that exists in india how many institutions offer courses in electrical engineering or how many institutions offer program in architecture if i want to know i need to have a descriptive research at my disposal or i would like to establish relationship within the two existing variable though we say it is correlational research but it is also collecting data at a particular point of time so relationships that exist third thing you see is practices that are held that means how students are being taught in the classes what are the instructional processes in place in architecture education or in management education or in civil engineering or electrical engineering if we are aiming to study that it is nothing but a practice that is being followed in the classroom scenario. Or we talk about how the institutions are managed in under triple 
fee scheme that is public private partnership scheme even this is a practice which is in vogue in today's context then you see processes that are going on practices or processes that are going on and effects that are being felt now whenever you talk about the impact assessment study impact is as you were yesterday taken up an example impact of architectural education on the creativity of the learners now this is where four years program has been implemented and at the end of the four years you are trying to determine what is the status of creativity among the learners this is again you are trying to determine the status of creative ability but if you take up this the same study that you assess the creativity level of the learners before implementing a different curriculum and then you assess the creativity level of the people then you are trying to do is if it's a long term you can call it a impact otherwise you can refer to it as effect of new curricula in architecture education on the creativity of the student so research can be the same study with a different methodology can yield experimental come under the category of experimental research you are able to yeah you can establish true cause and effect relationship or if you are simply studying the creativity level of the students at the end of the program that becomes a status study where you are assessing the impact of a particular program so in nutshell we can say that descriptive research deals with the explanation or detailing out the status of current phenomena current processes current practices and the impact of variable various themes which are felt by the society and here descriptive research can be classified into three different types of research the first is survey research the second one is case study research and the third one is content analysis now each one of us is familiar with survey research can you give me one or two examples of survey research census okay so one example i am getting from the center at nitoris that census which is carried out every 10 years that is an example of survey research and you can think of like we go to a movie and there is a person standing and he is distributing a questionnaire okay what is your opinion about the movie and we fill in that 5 10 questions we answer and he tries to give a review in the newspaper that this is the public opinion about the uh, movie that itself is also a survey but different techniques are used within the survey i will be going into details and how case study differs from survey research even the colleges which are being ranked by hansa or something that also is a survey research okay that they collect the data through a survey and then they go for ranking case study research uh, is when you deal with the specific case and do in depth analysis of that cases case study content analysis means where you are trying to analyze the content of the communication say for example i am standing and i am discussing a particular topic descriptive research in the class somebody is sitting who is trying to find out how many times the teacher made a mistake grammatical mistake when she was delivering her talk this is nothing but a person is involved in content analysis of the communication when you say a person has written an essay you all said papers and we try to analyze the papers how many topics were covered in the question paper how many grammatical mistakes were made by the paper setter whether the mark distribution was correct or incorrect whether 
the questions tested the higher level abilities or the lower level ability if we try to do this kind of analysis this is nothing but content analysis so when we say all these three types of research survey then case study then content some of the questions i'm just giving you few examples what kind of questions can be answered by each one of them now see what are the manufacturing processes used in automobile industry in punjab haryana and delhi you are talking about the existing manufacturing processes so this is nothing but a question which can be answered by a survey research how many automobile industries have complete automation of manufacturing processes i am trying to now decide the number of the industries again this is nothing but i have to find out from all the industries in a particular rigid it is again a survey type of research how many different job positions are available to graduate mechanical engineers in industry in and around ncr region again is an example of survey research now look at the next question how did award winning industry implemented total quality management now here survey is not going to be the strategy award winning you have first set a criteria which industry you are going to include and how they implemented how can be answered when you go deeper into the processes which are in place in the institution or the organization so it comes under the case study research so you are going to gather detailed data about the implementation of tqm then if you look at how it is uh, how much is the expenditure uh, no yes sir how old structures are demolished in usa now this is where you would like to go deeper into the technique used for demolishing the old structures and doing the in depth study of that process again this comes under case study all others which have enlisted this is the method of how they are being demolished yeah we can so, also research why they are being demolished yeah yes, why why and how can be answered through case studies case study why and how so then you have here how do ye sab wo a ja rahi hain all are survey research right but how and why questions they can be answered with case study what how how again numbers quantify when you try to quantify that comes under survey research so let's now look at the survey research in detail how would you like to when we see survey research that means we are trying to collect the data from members of a well defined population to determine the current status of that population with respect to variable now here the four major aspects which are important to be understood they include gather data at a particular point of time now that may be today i decide i have to collect information about how many teachers are there in technical institutions who are with different level of qualification graduates post graduates and doctorate now in india i have to know all that means i need to get the data from each state from all the institutions which exist there this is one where i am gathering data for all the members present in the population but i i don't have the time and the money and the resources to gather data from each and every institution so i i decide that i am not going to have the total number but i can have the representative sample from the population so when the population is small i can include every member 
but if the population is large i restrict myself to selecting a random sample for generalizing the finding of the study so survey can be with respect to population as you said census or survey can be a sample survey but it gathers data at a particular point of time in place and as we have already said they are explaining the processes practices variables at one particular point of time so it deals with explanation of existing processes practices conditions opinions perceptions right then you see that even you can have a study where you have a standard the benchmark already enlisted and you try to identify the gap that exists between the standard and the real practices the current practices now board of accreditation has laid down a criteria so when we try to evaluate any institution we try to collect the data for the last 3 years then we try to see and compare the data with the benchmark set by the nba nba and if we find a gap these are the areas where improvement needs to be done even this is a part of your descriptive study or a survey study then as we said you can also study relationships that you are trying to say we have collected the data how many teachers are graduates undergrad or oh sorry post graduates and doctorate now i can relate this with the teaching effectiveness is there any relationship between the qualification of the teacher and the teaching effectiveness as perceived by the student again this is a study where i am collecting data with respect to the qualification of teacher and taking the perceptions of students then i am trying to compare it with the level of qualification of the teacher and this is again comes under survey research after doing the survey and collecting the data when we are trying to establish some relationship between the two variables isn't it correlation ma'am correlation can be when the data is collected at the same point of time it can be labeled as correlation but correlation has two different component one where you collect data at a given point of time another is in correlation you can collect data at two different points Why of time time so both are correlational you can classify it but correlation is also part of descriptive descriptive so many times you collect the variables so you study the relationship now here these are the questions which have already spoken can be answered by survey research now you see as we say survey research can be further classified into two population survey and a sample survey so when population is accessible then we say we include each and every member of the population and the best example you have given is census or i say the people who graduate from nitter in 1980 1994 because we studied the programs in 92 and we have only say 20 20 people in two branches so we had only 40 student so i can include everybody in the uh, sample so that becomes a population survey or i say in chandigarh there is only one college of architecture so if i have to study the perception of the teachers i need to include all the members of the faculty because that is also very limited so that becomes a population survey as far as chandigarh is concerned then most of the studies which we do they are sample surveys because nobody has the time resources and the effort to be put in to collect data from each member of the population then you can have developmental survey to identify the trends now say for example when we say developmental so we are talking about the children who are at different stages of 
development. A child, you have a very infant is there, a child is there, adolescent is there, adult is there, and then you have the old age people. So what are the characteristics of different age groups? If you study, that becomes a developmental survey. Otherwise, we try to take up cross-sectional studies. Cross-sectional means I would like to know the perception or opinion of the people with respect to use of mobile phones. Now, a child will have altogether different opinion about the use of mobile phone. Adolescent would have a different one. Adult will have different. And then old people will have different opinion about the. So I want to have the sample from different age groups. And these are nothing but strata that exist within a population. So the, this becomes a cross-sectional study. Or I am taking an example of the teachers who are working in different levels of education. Some at the general education will be school, college, and the university. When I go to technical institutions, I have teachers working in ITI, then I have polytechnics, then I have the uh, degree, uh, engineering colleges, then the people working in the university departments. They form the different strata and they can be taken as the sample. Right? How do you select sample? I'll just go through that also. But here, when you gather information from different strata within the population and try to identify, compare, and then establish relationship, this is nothing but a cross-sectional study. Then we go to so education, gender, or economic status also yeah. can be under this. Well, good. When you take up high socioeconomic status, you deal with average socioeconomic status, or you deal with the low socio or below average socioeconomic status. And you try to compare. Now, this is a classifying variable. But we do have these strata within the society. So that becomes a cross-sectional study. Then we have, if you look at, that longitudinal surveys can also be carried out. Survey may not be one particular point of time. It can also collect data at different points of time. And you can establish the trend. Now, say, for example, the students who graduated in 60 from the engineering colleges, the student who graduated in 70, 80, 90, this population would differ. Those who graduated in 60 will be a different set of people. Those who graduated in 70 would be different, 80, 90, 2000. So when you try to have a sample, from the population and try to take their opinion about the engineering education when they were students at in the college this would give you a trend of change how the people feel about or what kind of opinion the people have about the engineering education in india so this is nothing but a longitudinal survey you are gathering data from different population different sample and then trying to establish the trend trend same wise you can take one variable say we are talking about the building say building construction now what was the price of or the cost of constructing one story 10 marla house in 1960 70 80 90 2000 2015 60. So if I try to gather the data, I can predict, uh, I can explain the increase, sorry, I can explain the increase in the cost of construction that has taken place over a period of 60 to 2016, that is 46 years, 44 years, 44 years of period. Then now these longitudinal surveys they can be classified into four different types one is the trend another is cohort 
कोहट से आप क्या समझते हैं हाउ डू यू एक्सप्लेन कोहट एनी फ्रॉम द सेंटर ऑल्सो कैन रिप्लाई वॉट इज अट Yes. Anybody would like to give an answer to? Yes. Cohort is nothing but a group of people, right? Now, say for example, the students who passed the engineering education in two thousand. It's a cohort. Now, or I would say the people who took admission into architecture education in two thousand twelve. that group of students is a cohort now i try to select different sample in four years and see how the attitude of the people have changed towards architecture i can do this kind of a study this is nothing but cohort when i select a group of 15 students from the population and i follow those 15 for the four years this becomes a panel study now there is a difference of words cohort is used in us a panel is used in uk so you can have cohort and panel so same group of sample when studied for consecutive four to five years that becomes a panel when you have different samples for the next five years from the same population that becomes a cohort study cohort study then you have follow up study follow up means the people who graduate from a particular institution they are traced this can be prospective follow up study that means you are doing a study of study of the people who graduated from the nitter in 2015 and i'm going to follow them for the next 5 years or 10 years this is prospective that after passing out or graduating from the institution where the students have been placed then what was their salary structure what was their knowledge skills and attitude level then after 3 years i am going to again talk to those people and find out have they gained any additional qualification have they undergone any additional training program or have they acquired any kind of certification to remain functional and effective in their organization then after four years again i'll go back and then find out are they working at same position or they have acquired a higher level of position and what has been the change that has occurred in other variables so this is prospective follow up study which you also refer to as traces studies then you can have a retrospective study also retro means moving backward now say for example ymca freedabad number of graduates they were occupying senior level position as ceos of number of companies so i come across there are 30 people from ymc freedabad who are heading the industry now i go to that person i said you have reached the ceo's position during the past 40 years or 30 years what events significant events took place in your life work life which have enabled you to reach this position so i trace back to the time when they graduate from the right. institution this is nothing but a retrospective trace study so trace studies or follow up studies can be of two types retrospective or prospect or prospective we have kind of lots of retrospective studies yes based on a particular disease so they take the data and try to figure out last 10 years what these people are eating or doing which led to this kind of yes disease. yes that it is true. thank you so much for supplementing it is that the person took the treatment from the pgi he was given certain subscription after 10 years that person is again traced back 
that during the last 10 years, what is the status and how he is able to maintain that status. So what has been the practices of eating, medication, exercises and so on, so that they can generalize the prescription for other patients. Other patients. So then these are four different types of longitudinal survey studies which can be taken up by the institutions. Now, just to give you a simple characteristic of survey research, it is systematic. That it has certain steps which are followed. Every research is systematic. It is impartial. Impartial in the way that when you are selecting a sample, you are not biased. You are not selecting sample just for the your convenience, but you are giving due representation to the members of the population. So there are different strategies, which I'll just give you an idea. Then it is representative. It is based on certain theory. When we say theory, that means certain theoretical foundation has impelled you to examine that phenomena. Now, when I say I'm going to see the creativity level of the people. So there is whole lot of theory which tells me that somebody who's in architecture need to be creative. Otherwise, all design will be routine and monotonous and you need a lot of innovation into the design aspect of buildings or monuments or other things. Then surveys are primarily, primarily quantitative. They give you quantitative information and these are replicated. This is very, very true for all types of research. That study which you take up, you should be able to replicate the study in different contexts. So it is a question of validity and reliability. reliability. Now, here you can see the steps very first day, Dr. Bedi might have dealt with the steps in the process of research. Steps remain the same. Now here, when we are saying identify problem, that means you need to, this Dr. Sneen has given you the detail, how you identify area of specialization, and then who, how you narrow down the search and you define your problem, right? So let me say that you are, I'm thinking of taking up a study in technical education. Huh? Technical education is too broad an area. Whether I'm going to focus on resources, whether I'm going to focus on the student as the input to the system, whether I'm going to focus on the instructional processes, whether I'm going to focus on the evaluation processes, whether I'm going to focus on the outcome from the technical education, all these are nothing but different variables. So I need to find out whether my area of work would be the input, the resources, the processes, the, uh, the procedures, or the management, or the out outcome from the institution. So if I say, I'm going to work on the human resources and technical education. Now, that broad area technical education is narrowed down to technical. That is human resources and technical education. But when I say human resources, again, human resources are of different types. I have human resources as faculty. I have human resources as technical supporting. I have human resources as the people, as the supporting staff, uh, the administrative staff. So are, uh, am I interested in all the three? Am I interested in one? Am I interested in two? What are those? Am I only focusing on the faculty? Am I going to focus on the faculty and the supporting staff or all the three? So I need to answer this question before I finalize my problem. Then. When I say the effectiveness of human resource, that is the faculty, what there may be a gain number of variables which determine the effectiveness of the 
teacher, the faculty, that may be his qualification, that may be the motivational level, the commitment to the organization, commitment to teaching, that may be another variable which determines the effectiveness. Or when I say the teacher, maybe the teacher style of teaching, that may be one variable which determines the effectiveness or the teacher workload may be another variable which may affect us. So I go in for a brainstorming. Maybe I'm the one I do brain writing. I sit back, the literature I have gone through, my observation in the field, I try to enlist the various factors which I think could affect the teaching effectiveness of teacher. Out of these factors, there may be certain relevant ones, certain irrelevant. So I prune the list of the factors that can affect the teaching effectiveness and I retain the relevant ones which I can study objectively. And then I try to define the problem. So maybe I'm I'm only concentrate, uh, concentrating on the teaching yeah, measurable, observable, measurable variable. So maybe I'm zeroing down to employee commitment, employee motivation, or employee qualification, and the teaching effect. These are three, four factors which I would like to include in my study. So your first step is identify the problem and define that problem. Define means you identify the variable and you define those variables and state your objectives. Then comes review of related literature which we had dealt with at length yesterday that you tap different sources preliminary, primary, and secondary to gather the data. Then select the participants. Now, when I say select participants, I'm just bound by, there's no board here. So sample can be selected. You can use two different techniques of sampling. You can use probability sampling technique, or you can use non-probability sampling. Anybody who would throw light on, because many of you are from the uh, engineering, technology, research, even management. So what, what is probability sampling technique and what is non-probability sampling? When each and every unit of population has equal chance of being included in sample, that is probability sampling. Very right. So when you can determine the chances of a member of the population to be in the sample or out of the sample, it is probability sample. And when it is, you cannot determine the chances of a member to be in the sample, it is non-probability sample. Now, probability sampling can be simple random sample. When I say simple random sample, it means I have a population of 300. I need to select the 10% of that. How do I go about? So I number all the 300 members of the population, put it in a box, bowl or a box, randomly pick the 31, the lottery system which you adopt. That itself is simple random sample. But to be more scientific, we use the random number tables. Random number table, or we have the computer which assists us in getting the 30 randomly selected from the list of 300. And these are representative of the total population of three simple random. Now see, if I have 300, I want to select 30. Now, when I am doing this simple random sampling, maybe the 30 who get selected, they are all males and there is no female representation in the sample. It can happen. 
there may be all the 30 who are above the age range of 45 all 30 this is a chance because i had no information about other any information i go in for another procedure which is proportionate yes stratified proportionate sample that solves my problem so i say out of the 300 200 are male 100 are female now in which proportion they exist 2 is to 1 so that means if i want to have representative sample my sample should have the same representation of the gender male and female so what do i do if i have to select 30 how many should be it should be 20 and 10 so 20 male and 10 female if i select randomly from the population of male and female in the population that becomes a stratified proportionate sample i can use equal proportion also so i say out of 300 dog there are 200 and 100 but i would like to have 50 50 from male and 50 female so equal proportion of the uh, gender i would like to include in my sample but they represent both the status within the population you can also use systematic random sum so out of 300 30 are needed divide 300 by 30 so you get 10 every 10th candidate in the list of 300 forms your sample this is nothing but systematic random sample but again systematic random sample will have the problem of simple random sample so it is always better to go in for stratified proportionate sample if you have different strata within the population so the more the heterogeneous population better would be to go in for stratified sampling rather than going for random simple random or a systematic sampling then fourth is it happens now say for example i want to carry out a study on industry which is geographically dispersed there is concentration of industry in punjab in two three areas what are those ludhiana <coughs> jalandhar amritsar and batala chalo we take four so we say concentration of housing industry in punjab is in amritsar and ludhiana two places but industry exists a number of places in punjab maybe there is one unit in jalandhar also or two units in jalandhar also primarily these are concentrated in ludhiana and and maybe within ludhiana if i take ludhiana maybe there is geographical area where there is lot of concentration of housing industry and yeah, less yeah. concentration on the out, uh, other areas of ludhiana in this case when the population is dispersed over a geographical location then we need to use the cluster sampling technique cluster means cluster again is a group so you need to identify which is the average size of a cluster there may be two in one area four in another 10 in another 20 in another and 15 in one now say kitna total ho gaya ludhiana mein 500 Okay, say one fifty industries are there, but they are dispersed in Ludhiana itself. Now, my I out of the one fifty, I want to select say fifty uh, industries. Wouldn't it be better if I go to a unit where all the fifty are available and just collect the data and come back, or would it be better that I determine the average size of the cluster and then i try to find how many clusters i need to include in my sample now what do i do i try to add the cluster number that is one cluster is comprising of two units another cluster is comp comprising of four units another 10 another 
and this. So the, say I have seven clusters and this is geographically dispersed. Total is 150. Every size would be every size 150 total hai. cluster ka size agar determine karna ho to kaise hoega? Saat jaga pe distributed hai. 150 divided by 7 average size of the cluster is 20. So I need to select 50. So I look at where the cluster satisfies me. One cluster would satisfy 50 or I have two of 20, 20 another of 10. So that you decide this is referred to as cluster sample. Again, all the members within the cluster will be part of your sample, right? Then we can use non-probability sampling technique as you said. That non-probability samples mean you can use purposive sum. Yeah. Purposive. You can explain that. Uh, when you select sample as per purpose, as for your purpose. Yeah. This purpose right. When you select a sample that satisfy the purpose of the study. Now, when I say I would like to know the reactions of the people of award-winning industries in 2016. I industries ko award mila tha, I would only select those. So award-winning industries may not be many. There may be five, there may be ten. So all those ten becomes my sample and I then select sample from that unit and then study. So this is purposive or I say all students who topped their respective branches of engineering in 2014, 15 and 16. So my study is limited only to the toppers of the branches from the university. So I'm only taking other 50 or 100 only the 100 people are there in the sample, purposive sample. There can be snowball sampling. Idea? What is snowball sampling? Anybody from the center would like to give a reply? What is snowball sampling? Hello. Hanji. Oh, good morning, ma'am. I'm from MIT Meerut. Hanji. Snowball sampling, when we are not aware about the depth population, Right. We use the snowball sampling where we uh, can place uh, any one of the people who are who we are aware of, and from them we get the references about other. Fine. Thank you very much. Bilkul thika apne that uh, ma'am has taken an example of like there was a person who had a cancer treatment. Now I, as an individual, doesn't have information how many people here had cancer treatment. So I go to one person and I ask and he says when I was under treatment there were two more people who were undergoing the treatment. So I can give you the reference of two people. You get two. When you meet them, one of them say I have three members which I know they were also getting the treatment from a different doctor. So you have another three included in the sample. So when you have no information about the population and you don't have access to that. Here, you can have access. You can visit the hospitals and get the information. But say, for example, how many people graduated in 60? I did the list. But where these 60 people are placed, I have no information. But then there are friend circles which keep on meeting each other. So they become the snowball sampling. I give you two, they give you four. So, you have to say that you have to say that and this, this is how snowball sampling technique takes place. Okay? So, you can use snowball sampling or you can use convenient sampling sometimes. Now, you go to one institution who is available on that day, you collect data from those people because you don't have time and resources to wait for. But these non-probability sampling techniques should not be preferred to probability sampling. Wherever possible, random sample should always be preferred because you can generalize the findings of the study. Otherwise, it becomes a problem. 
So these are different techniques which will be dealt in detail tomorrow. But I'm just giving you an idea. Then you have selected the party spends. The next step is to select the tools, tools for collecting the information. So you primarily in survey studies, questionnaires are the tools which can be used. And when I say questionnaires, they can have different types of items in that. You can include dichotomous response type items, that is yes, no type item. That is, are you married? Yes or no? You can see that. Is your gender? Male and female. Aapki dichotomy, do response are there. Male and female. So dichotomous response type item could be there. Or you can have multiple choice item within the questionnaire. You say the distance between the home, your home, and your institution is between 0 to 5 kilometers, 5 to 10 kilometers, 10 to 15 kilometers, 15 to 20 kilometers. And the person has to pick up a right response from the given one. You can have ranking type items. Now I say there are 10 teachers who are teaching you in first semester. Rank the teachers in order of their effectiveness, giving one to the most effective one, ten to the least effective one. Isi tarah jaise aap kare automobile ki, to aap kado there are number of brands of cars which are available. Rank them in order of your preference. One, two, three, four. Pehla kisko ja raha hai? Skoda ka ja raha hai ya? BMW ko ja raha hai ya? Audi ko ja raha hai ya? Hyundai ko ja raha hai ya? Nano Maruti ko jara ya and so on. So on. So you have a list which you want them to rank on the basis of their preference. You can also, like there's a mobile phone, which you may have bought with a brand. So you can ask them too. The students will have different, teachers will have different. You want to know reference up ranking. You can also ask the people to rate. Different things. I say the teacher is punctual for the class. Ab ye punctual hai ya nahi hai? Ek din punctual ho gaya to punctual to nahi ho na? So I have a rating. Is he always punctual? Is he frequently punctual? He is sometimes punctual. He is rarely punctual, or he is never punctual. So maine ye punch or I say the questioning technique of the teacher is excellent, very good, good, satisfactory, and poor. And I give what do I mean by excellent? What what I mean by very good, so that people can rate, rate, rate. So you can use the rating scale. You can also use open-ended question. Now, when you say student. What are the five problems you face in the classroom? They enlist the five problems. Yeah. You ask the student to give suggestions for bringing improvement in the quality of instruction or the practical work uh, done in the technical institution. They give you five suggestions. This is open-ended. Yeah. So you can also go in when you study attitudes, then you can use a scale of agreement and disagreement. So normally five point scale, strongly agree, agree, indifferent, disagree, and strongly disagree. Now when I say these, I'm trying to take the attitude dimension into account. So I want to know what is the attitude of teachers towards the students. Student. Okay. So I say students, now you're dealing with perceptions, right? So Students of 21st century are always preferring team, always told with you. Students of 21st century prefer working in teams rather than independently. Yes, no response. But if I write students of 21st century prefer working in teams, strongly agree. Agree, 
indifferent, disagree, or strongly disagree. So you try to gather the perception of the people, which gives you their inclination, what they think of about the students of 21st century. So in addition to questionnaires, you can also use interview schedule. When the, you want to go, uh, say for example, population is small, structured interview schedule can also be, which is just a replica of questionnaire. And what only difference is, questionnaire is filled in by the respondent, structured interview schedule is filled in by the researcher himself, getting the response of the respondent. I go to the people in the village where they are not able to read and write or, so I'm dealing with a group of people. So what do, I have structured question, I get a response, I put a response in the structured interview schedule. Sometimes, you also observe the existing phenomena and validate the information which you have gathered through questionnaires and interview schedules. So say for example, when I was talking about uh, classroom processes, instructional, maybe 10 classes I attend, I have a feel that whatever is written by the people in the questionnaire, actually that is happening in the classroom situation. So I do the observation, right? So you can primarily questionnaire followed by in question, uh, interview and observation. And when we do a survey, TV pay, you come across, they flash a question, they ask us to respond to that. Or you say, but have reply, 90% said yes, 10% said no. But I do not know whether one person responded to that. 2% responded to that, or 1000 people responded to that question. It has given me very faulty information. So what do I, I need to provide information, which is valid and reliable. So questionnaire design karna apne apne art hai. And then collecting the information is also, which requires skills on the part of the researcher. You are not there to impress upon your own opinion perception to those people from where you are getting the response. It should be completely unbiased response of the respondent. Don't you agree that this happened? Right? Don't you agree means so always you have to be very, very careful. And then survey research means that you are going to uh, analyze the data primarily when we are dealing with the questions, then percentages, frequencies, average, uh, we calculate. And then if we are going to establish the relationship between two variables, maybe we use the uh, correlation technique. And if we are trying to compare the performance of, say, male and female or the teachers with graduate, postgraduate, doctorate degree, maybe I'm using ANOVA to analyze the differences that exist in the teaching effectiveness of the people who are with different qualifications. So you can use different techniques based upon your research questions. And then we draw the conclusions and prepare the report. I'll just uh, now, because the time left to me is less, let's uh, just the second type of research, which can be carried out. Now, here is the case study research. Now, when I say case study, now I'm giving you a few examples here. A case study of initiatives taken by alchemist for reducing water pollution. Now, this kind of a study, alchemist, so you are only referring to one particular industry. And what initiative that industry has taken to reduce the water pollution, that we are focusing. That means there is only one unit which I am taking into consideration and I am going to have the in-depth study of the you know, initiatives taken by that. This doesn't come under 
survey research. This is an example of case study research. Go to the second one, which I've written. I have wireless railway catenary structural monitoring system. It is a full scale case study, which is available on Science Direct. So you have picked up one particular system, which you would like to study in detail or evaluation methods for improving surface geometry of concrete floors, a case study. Here also you are referring to one specific technique which is studied in detail. Then you see root cause analysis of fractured ASTM A53 carbon steel pipe at oil and gas company. And this actually happened, right? And you can see metallurgical failure analysis of a cracked aluminium 7075 wing internal angle in case of a spacecraft. Failure investigation of a taper roller bearing a case study. Why I'm trying to give you these? Because you should have a feel in engineering also. Case studies can be taken up. And here, let me just give you a few glimpses of the videos here. So we have they can, if, uh, the people working in the mechanical engineering, they come across, many times you come across the accidents that take place. Now here, you have 15 worst plane crashes that happen. Now I stop this. Let us. Thank you. Actually, this video is available on the YouTube, and you can have a look at that. Each case is a different from the other one, so it doesn't require any kind of survey research. But one needs to go in for case study research. Why this incident happened? How this happened? What were the consequences of this incident? How in future this incident could be avoided? Now here you have like we had seen this uh, again. This is a train accident which took place and recently we have seen in UP, we had uh, two incidents which have taken place. So maybe they become the case study research for you, right? Thank <laughs> you. 
Matilde. So you can see. Oh, it's not jada evident. Now here you can see the derailment that has taken place in case of a train. And uh, we have like you could see the Spain train, uh, which there was derailment. Uh, which is quite We're evident. A dramatic new video showing that train disaster in northern Spain. Eight cars derailed and burst into. Oh, flames. see that. Overnight, oh. terrible. Overnight, the death toll rose dramatically. At least 77 people have been killed, twice as many injured, and there are indications that the train was traveling more than twice the speed limit because it was running late. Now, though the news reader has given you one indication that the speed of the train was double what was permissible to them. But one needs to go into in-depth analysis of this incident to find out why this kind of a, a thing happened. We have cases of where a bridge collapsed, the building collapsed. Now, a building which has been constructed three years before is now there are cracks appearing in the building or there's a lot of seepage that is coming in in the building. Now, all these are nothing but specific cases where you need to analyze the case, identify the reason, use the strategy to mitigate the adverse effect of that cause. So all this in engineering and technology and in management say a particular case, the institution was started uh, three years back or four years back, and abruptly after four years, there was no admission in that institution. Stop. So this is a case which you need to take up. Why in this particular institution there is no admission, a single admission in a particular program is a case. I, as a teacher, Going to the class, I find all the room is empty. Nobody comes to my class, but they are attending all other classes. Now, I am a case. You need to make a study on me. What is it that is happening in the class of Dr. PKD to find out the specific reasons why students don't prefer to attend the classes of PKD? This is a case. I am a student in your class. I don't submit any of the assignments you have given to me. I am a case. As a student, you need to find out the reason why I indulge in this kind of it. It doesn't require any survey. It is a very specific, specific instance which you need to have a case study. So you have, say, the building you have designed, people don't prefer to stay in a building. Something is terribly wrong with the structural design of that building. Or what is it? Structural design is a problem, or are there uh, external factors that are leading the occupant not to take the occupancy in that building? There can be a number of reasons, right? So you have various cases which can be taken up. And when we say it is a case study research, let's quickly go through. Yeah, mm, 15 play. Ye maine bridge ka aapko bol diya hai. And we had this kind of bridge collapsed in India on 31st March 2016. Kolkata and dozens were trapped under the rubble as in the construction bypass. This was Tata Nano car which came into being and initially the car started burning. So the Tata Nano had to go in for a case study of the design uh, of the nano car, of the functioning of the car, of the engine of the car, and finally they found the mistake. So it was pure case study which they took up. Isitra, aapko train details ki maine I have talked about. So these questions now, say for example, how enterprise resource planning system was implemented in the automotive industry. I am referring to automotive industry, but the people who have implemented ERP. So only that industry which has a similar characteristic becomes a part of my sample. But I need to go in-depth study of that. 
how could ymc freedabad establish linkage with the world of work this requires in depth analysis why iit bombay is able to undertake collaborative research worldwide is a question which i can only be answered by the people of iit bombay so it doesn't require survey a case how an institution or industry prepared itself for obtaining iso certification so you see likewise how interpersonal relationships are maintained in a particular tribe or a society how and why do organizations collaborate with one another to provide joint services why do we sign mou with industry why means i am answering the question why means the purposes which it serves for the industry and the organization but i may be more interested in how do they actually implement the mous to increase or strengthen the employability skills on the part of the student all these questions can be answered so if you look at the definition of case study you are going deeper into a phenomena into a process into a practice to answer the questions related to how and why how and why then chhod dijiye uh what is more important in case studies is the research questions which you formulate research questions should seek deeper data from the or in depth data from the unit of something chahe wo teacher hai chahe wo organization hai chahe wo industry hai so if your question is related to why then suddenly it is asking you need to talk to the people to gather that kind of information questioner will not serve that purpose so say for example we took a burst case study of ymc faridabad and we were stationed in faridabad for 15 days and we had tried to take interview of each and every teacher in that organization and almost 40 to 45 minutes we were to spend with the teacher on each day and we were doing that and we collected large amount of data to answer the research questions which we had proposed in the beginning of the study and then you need to have the propositions why propositions are required because mm -hmm. when you collect the data and you try to analyze and interpret the data these propositions help you to build associations or link the data from one variable to another for example we had a proposition that students uh, when they enter the ymc freedabad they were subjected to entrance examination so the proposition was the entrance examination help the institution to select better quality input and that in turn leads to better output from the system that was a proposition so we are able we try to gather the data regarding the entrance examination then the quality of students we ask the teachers how did they perceive the quality of student then the pass percentages we try to build a link between the three so propositions help the researcher to interpret and build association and links among the data and the information and unit of analysis that is very very important so whether you want one particular institution one particular teacher one particular student or say for example there are 10 students who are delinquents so these 10 have similar characteristics they can form the sample for a case study all the 10 right so you need to select the unit of samples very carefully when you are taking up a case study now when i say erp तो ईआरपी उन्होंने लिख तो दिया इंप्लीमेंट किया पर इट इज नॉट एक्चुअली बीन इंप्लीमेंटेड इन द इंडस्ट्री बट मेरा पर्पस क्या था दोस हु हैव इंप्लीमेंटेड एंटरप्राइज रिसोर्स प्लानिंग सिस्टम अब वो नहीं हुआ एंड आई हैव टेकन दैट इट विल नॉट हील एनी रिजल्ट्स इट विल नॉट हेल्प यू इन एनी वे 
because it is only on surface they have not actually done it then logical linking of the data is important so i would uh, uh, not go into details of this but i would be sending the material to all the members to go through it so survey research and case study research we have completed that case is different from the survey where you are going and gathering in depth data and information it is primarily gathering qualitative information from the unit and then trying to interpret that data and information in the light of the research questions and proposition so linking of data relationships building coming with certain theoretical uh, um, uh, i would say again the case study research can help you to formulate propositions towards the end because the proposition you started they may be verified or they may not be so you come out with a new set of propositions at the end of case study then we have a third type of research which i have not i think included in the slides let me just have a quick look at if i have uh no not here content analysis so uh, i'll just be focusing on content analysis and In case study, dictionary meaning of proposition is assumption. 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 Which can be proved or disproved. Right. Right. So, uh, what we say in survey research or experimental research, we form formulate the hypothesis. But in case of case studies, it is not hypothesis. These are propositions. We start with a certain assumption. These are assumptions only. assumptions which can be verified on the basis of the data data right they may be accepted or they may be rejected as the hypothesis is in case of experimental research there are assumptions now when it come to content analysis the purpose is to convert the qualitative information into quantitative and you analyze the piece of communication and that piece of communication can be lecture delivered a speech delivered a, a interaction that has taken place between the two members the board meeting which has taken place or the quality of handout which you provide to your students the quality of powerpoint which you use in your classes the learning material you produce a research report which has been produced by a researcher if i need to evaluate i need to go in for content analysis of that piece of communication if you ask me what is your opinion about your novel written by shakespeare unless and until i go through that piece of communication and try to this requires content analysis so any piece of communication which needs to be evaluated involves content analysis and here simple example where the teachers can use it now for the question papers i just take an example of the question papers which you frame for your students for class test for end term examination or mid term examination now what are some of the characteristics that should be satisfied by the question paper open to the participants take 5 minutes and then we'll break for tea han ji ek acha question paper what are some of the characteristics one is it is very fundamental is it is as per the okay no no i have got two criteria from ma'am she says one is whether it is from the total syllabus covered till that point till that point second is whether it tests only the lower level abilities of remembering and understanding or it tests application and higher than application ability any other it can be uh, said as per the requirements as per well every students it should not be too tough <laughs> wait wait maybe we don't agree with that 
it should cater to the different ability level students some questions of higher difficulty to satisfy the people who are highly intelligent some of the average difficulty so that people can do it easily and some easy where a below average student can also attend those so it has questions of different difficulty level that is another criteria any other criteria language. any center would like to language, language use. any other center would like to give answer to are you all here or not okay and ji so maybe we get one answer from the center koi ek de do anyone ji tell me one criteria for good quality question paper and ji any one criteria and rasulullah sahab ask you the natika hello ji sir please bolie can you hear me the answer kya aap uh, we could didn't get your reply sir so what is your reply the question is give me one criteria for good quality question paper so good quality question paper ka hello. one criteria if you can say hello hello any other center would like to argue are you for it hello hello uh, hello one criteria of good quality question paper hello no i am raguna from sdb can you hear me madam हाँ जी आई एम एबल टू हियर यू सर गो है मैडम थिंग इज दैट द क्वेश्चंस व्हिच आर ड्रॉन इन एनी क्वेश्चन पेपर शुड बी दे शुड बी ड्रॉन फ्रॉम ऑल द कंटेंट द होल करिकुलम विद प्रॉपर वेटेज बीइंग गिवन टू ईच कंटेंट थैंक यू सो मच सो द पॉइंट व्हिच वाज गिवन बाय मैम इन द बिगिनिंग दैट इट शुड बी फ्रॉम द कंटेंट व्हिच हैज बीन कवर्ड एंड इट शुड टेस्ट different ability level as per the weightage given in the curriculum so thank you very much yeah. so in addition to that there are number of criteria that means it should cover the whole syllabus it should test the different levels ability it should have the questions from varying difficulty level easy to average to high difficulty level there should be some questions which involve problem solving on the part of the learner and then you have the language of the question should be they should be grammatically correct and should be comprehensible to the uh, person who is responding to the question paper then you have the mark distribution has to be appropriate time allocated for attempting the question paper should be adequate and then instructions need to be explicit brief and uh, then there should not be repetition of questions from the previous question paper maybe this is the criteria now i have this criteria in view i pick up the five years paper last five years each paper i try to analyze with respect to this criteria first paper covered how many topics level of abilities tested grammatically mistakes grammatical mistakes made in appropriate marking done and i do it for all the five years paper then i say out of the five 60% of the papers were set from 50% of the syllabus so i draw a conclusion this is nothing but content analysis or say for example when uh, you pick up a powerpoint presentation of the teachers used in the class and you see whether the powerpoint presentation gives only the broad points or it picks up the text from the book and reproduce there and just read it from <laughs> so i'm just testing the quality of powerpoint so whether the broad point whether it suffices the rule of 6 into 6 six line six words per line whether it suffices that rule 
whether the font size is appropriate or inappropriate, whether the color combination is appropriate or inappropriate. These are reasons. Whether animation simulation has been used in the PowerPoint or not. What are the effects? What are the instructional purposes? You don't need any effects in your PowerPoint. So whether use of effect is made or not, transitional effect, yeah. Definitely fly in, fly out, fly from the bottom, fly from the top. All these effects may change, who will be here. So unnecessary effects have been. So we have the criteria enlisted. We try to analyze the piece of communication with respect to the content, then convert the qualitative information into quantitative. This is nothing but content analysis. So, in nutshell, descriptive research comprises of three different types of research survey, case study, and content analysis. All three can be used by any individual, like even the person engineering, up to manual banato, up to handout data, and even technical uh, manuals are prepared. And if you want to see what is the quality of the technical technical manual that a company, a particular machine, or a tool, or a technique, that you can do with the help of content analysis. The dissertation, the thesis, the industry report, when submitted by the student, it records and take analysis. You can go in for people submit assignment. You can go in for content analysis research by analyzing how much is the matter copied from the books, reference books, what is the original contribution of the student to the assignments in journal. It's a piece of research. Right? So then case studies where you have the cases of success and cases of failure. Then case study research would help. Otherwise, if you really want to determine the present status, survey research. Any question from yourself?